Hey guys, welcome to Master IV. This is going to be our video on the cell life cycle. Okay guys, so first we're going to actually talk about why would cells have to divide. So first we would consider the limitation of the surface area to volume ratio. They also have to grow. There's asexual reproduction and embryonic development. So that's all the reasons why a cell would have to divide. So first, what is the cell life cycle? Well, basically, it's a series of events which leads to the cell dividing itself to generate two genetically identical daughter cells. Now, the cell life cycle is split into three different steps. Interphase, where the cell prepares itself by doubling its organelles, increasing its volume size, and replicating its DNA. Then it goes through the next step, which is mitosis. And then it goes into cytokinesis, which means the cell divides. And now we have two perfectly genetical identical cells. So first, let's get into the steps of interphase. Gap 1 is when the cell increases its volume in its cytoplasm. It uh, doubles its organelles. And it also synthesizes proteins. Then it enters the phase called synthesis phase, or S phase. Now basically, this is just the cell replicating its DNA and next comes gap 2. Gap 2 is a lot like gap 1 except it's called G2 and uh, it's exactly the same, everything happens exactly the same so it increases its volume of cytoplasm, it doubles its organelles and it also inc uh, synthesizes proteins. Now in between each step of the cycle are actually these things called checkpoints. Now these occur three times due to the three steps being gap 1, gap 2, and synthesis phase. Between each step in the checkpoints, it verifies whether the DNA is damaged or not. Between the G1 checkpoint, S-cyclin and CDK2, which is an enzyme, react together to give you the maturation promotion factor. Now this means that the cell can go through the next step, which is G2, and then it'll go through the next phase, which is S. So. After the interphase, when the cell has grown, the organelles have duplicated and the DNA is duplicated, the cell goes into mitosis. Now mitosis is also divided into, into steps, in this case four steps. These are prophase, metaphase, anaphase and telophase. Let's start with prophase. So we have the DNA, which is two sets of complete DNA inside of the nucleus and they supercoil and condense into things called sister chromatids. This is the only time in the cell life cycle where we can actually see the DNA. Once the DNA is condensed into sister chromatids, which are groups of identical chromosomes joined together at the centromere, the nuclear membrane disintegrates and that's the end of prophase. Now in metaphase what happens is that two structures at either pole of the cell, called the centrosome, they form microtubules, and those microtubules attach to the centromere of each sister chromatid and extend in order for the sister chromatids to move towards the equator or the center of the cell. So in anaphase, the microtubules start contracting, pulling apart the sister chromatids, meaning that um, one chromosome of each chromatid is traveling to either end of the cell. And in telophase, what happens is that each side of the cell now has a complete set of DNA and uh, the nuclear membrane reforms and the microtubules detach from the cell meaning that we now have two complete diploid nuclei on either end of the cell. Now let's move into cytokinesis. After telophase where the two nuclei are formed the cell has to still divide. Now this happens differently in animal cells and in plant cells. Let's look at the animal cell first. In the animal cell Basically what happens is that a ring of contractile proteins, which is just within the cell membrane, starts contracting, forming a caving in of the cell membrane, known as the cleavage furrow. That cleavage furrow continues growing until both ends meet and completely divide the cell. First, during the telophase in the plant cell, um, vesicles from the Golgi apparatus start moving towards the middle of the cell. Those vesicles then join and fuse not only with each other but with the already existing cell wall to form something called the cell plate which basically divides the cytoplasm of the two halves of the cell now. Following that, um, 
substances such as pectin and cellulose, as well as hemicellulose, which make up the cell wall, are secreted into that space in, in the cell plate to make the new cell wall. So guys, that was our video and unlike sister chromatids, Dean and I can't be separated. Okay then, um, so please like and subscribe, we are gonna make new videos, so. Bye guys.